Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. I have undertaken to make new early Edwardian undergarments. I am quite fond of the early period, that transitional time between late Victorian and Edwardian, usually around 1898 to 1904. I had already made an ensemble of this time period, but I was not happy with that corset. I'll link that blog post down below. Here are some of my main inspirations. I decided to make a new corset in a pair of combinations. So when undertaking to make a new corset, I really wanted to try an Atelier Sylph pattern as I had heard great wonders. I hope I didn't mispr mispronounce that. These are patterns taken from extant garments. I purchased the ED8 pattern and I did not regret it at all. I made a mock-up of this which only needed some minor alterations. So I just thought I'd mention real quick um, the changes I've made. So this is my mock-up for the corset. Um, it's a bit ugly, I know. Um, I don't have any footage of it on because it doesn't look very good at all. Um, but the main thing is that um, it does the diamond shape of the lacing at the back, so that means it needs more space in the waist. You can see it here it's been pulled, um, the strain is too much for it. So I decided to add some to the waistline of the corset. Um, I decided to add about an inch and a half, um, which I then divided between three different seams, three different pattern pieces, um, which hopefully will work out. I'll just show you what I did. This is one of the side back ones. And what I did was, thankfully this pattern is actually really good, and it's got, um, it's got waist marked just there. So then from there I marked what I needed to add, which is just a tiny little bit. Then using my French curve I fixed that and then added the according seam allowance that I've stolen by doing by redoing the curve. And I did this on this pattern piece. This pattern piece. So they're really tiny alterations, but in the end they should give me enough room. Um, and there was another one that I can't find right now, so this will have to do. But yeah, you can see the tiny little changes there, so that's the waistline, so the waistline is there. And that's the tiny little bit I added. Tiny little bit I added. Yeah. S-bend corsets are very complicated, so I didn't want to touch it too much. For fabrics, I am using some leftover couture I had in this lovely pale yellow cotton sateen I bought at a vintage shop. These were about three cuts of a metre to a metre and a half, and they cost me five pounds. I also had this lace featured here, though I swapped it out for a different lace in the end. Once I got the pattern sorted out, I went ahead with assembly. It was a bit tricky as I tried new methods with this. The pattern did come with some instructions, but I found it a bit tricky to decipher them. Though once I got it, it became very clear. Um, my first step was to cut the pattern pieces out of the couture and the sateen. The couture is very hard to pin to, so instead I traced around it and then cut. I was also careful with grain lines as they are very important in corsetry. Once all the pieces were cut out, I transferred all the markings to the couture layer using a heat vanishing pen, which was pretty dumb as I had to iron the seams before attaching the channels, so all the markings disappeared anyway. The next step was to flatline all the pieces together. I matched them up, pinned them and then basted them together. Then I could treat each piece as a whole. I started by inserting the busk. I won't go into a lot of detail in this as I just followed the method described in So Kirby's blog post, I'll link it down below. It was the first tutorial I ever followed and I've been using this method ever since. 
Basically, you need two layers for each side of the busk. So I have the flatline layer of couture and sateen and then an extra layer of couture, which will essentially act as a lining to encase the busk. These two pieces are seamed together. On the tooth edge of the couture, you mark the teeth onto it so that you leave these gaps in the seam and then slide the busk into it. Then I pinned around it and basted the busk into place. Then it was top stitch using a zipper foot. For the knobbly side, I butted it up to the seam and marked each of the little knobs, then used an awl and some fray check to make small holes. The busk half is slotted into place, pushing each knob into place. It is then basted in top stitch also. Once the busk was done, it was time to move on to the gores. Now in the past, I sewed gores in the usual manner of seaming them right sides together and doing some tricky pivoting. Pivot! Pivot! Despite some practice, I've yet to get them right. However, the wonderful Sarah of Serend Serend Costume, I'll link her Instagram down below, told me about this method she saw in an excellent corset in a Symington collection, where the seam allowance is turned inwards and the gore is top stitched into place. So that's exactly what I did. I turned the scan to a quarter of an inch seam allowance inwards, using my iron, then basted it into place. Then I aligned the edge with the half an inch seam allowance on the gore beads, pinned and basted. This was top stitched into place. Then I turned the longer seam allowance inwards and top stitched again a quarter of an inch from the previous stitching line which essentially fat fell the seam. I did this for both hip cores and a half of the breast core. The other half is in a normal seam, which I started doing now. For the seams, I kept referring back to the original pattern as they already had different seam allowances. Some had a quarter of an inch, others had half an inch, and this was to accommodate the flat fell seams, so you didn't have to trim any. I pinned, basted and sewed them as carefully as possible, then giving them a thorough press. Along the way I also realised I had forgotten to add the waist tape to the busk seam, so instead I added it when I sewed the busk piece to the first pattern piece. Once all the seams were sewn, I turned them inwards and basted them down. Then I top stitched a quarter of an inch from the seam. Absolutely nerve wracking. I did flat fill a couple of seams in the back by hand, but that is because I messed up. I think I accidentally added the lining of the back edge as an extra piece rather than as a lining. This was my mistake, I think. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, they were flat filled by hand.
Then I placed my twill tape along the boning channels and basted them into place. I stitched them into place by machine. Even more nerve-wracking as I am usually betrayed by my bobbin thread. I sewed the edges of each tape down, then down the middle to separate the channels. Thankfully nothing terrible happened. For the boning, I salvaged the boning from my mock-up. It wasn't fully boned so I had to add a couple extra. I used synthetic whale bone, which I'm a huge fan of. I simply measured what I need, cut it and then file the edges round. I also had to add one metal bone on each side. I used flat steel for this, which I cut, filed and then covered the edges in zinc tape. I pinned the waist tape into place. Some of my waistline markings had disappeared into the seams, so I kept pulling out the pattern pieces to make sure it was correct. This was then sewn into place by hand. To finish the top and bottom edges, I made some bias tape by cutting strips of sateen on the bias seaming them together and ironing the correct folds. I then had to stop putting off adding the little odd shape to the front of the corset. I think its purpose is related to stockings, but I can't say I'm too sure. I also had another issue, my busk was slightly too long, so I didn't have enough seam allowance left to do it by machine. So instead I stitched it into place by hand by folding the piece's seam allowance inside. I covered the raw edge with twill tape. To add the binding, I pinned it to the top edge, right sides facing each other, and sewed it by machine, metering the many corners. This was then ironed up and over the corset, pinned into place and whip stitched by hand. I swapped out the lace from the footage in the beginning for this one. I felt like something simple might be the best way to go. I pinned it and then hand sewed it into place. I would also like to floss this corset but I haven't gotten around to it yet. But that is it for this corset in this video. Thanks for watching.